the machine on. And now it should be flashing at us, ready to go. Monitor's gonna pull itself up. Everything is set. Now this is a one cursor. This is kind of the unique part. I'm gonna stand on this side. If you guys wanna do something, basically this is our mouse. Yeah. Without pushing in, we're just gonna scroll it and it moves to the different areas that you can... Yeah, left on the yeah. bottom. Mm -hmm. Correct. So we're gonna go to jog. Once we're highlighted on it, we push in, just like hitting the left click. Yeah. Takes you to the jog screen. Okay, in order to move something, again, if you can scroll around to what you want to do, but let's say we want to jog. I'm gonna highlight jog. I'm gonna push it one time and it's gonna jump from the bottom of the screen to the top of the screen. I have two choices. I can jog X or Y. If I rotate it right, it goes down. If I rotate it left, it goes up. Push it again. Mm -hmm. If I rotate it right one more time off of Y, it jumps back down to the bottom and it allows me to move again. Oh, so okay. whenever you're up here and doing something, as you go to the right, it moves down. At, after the last one, it'll jump to the bottom. Yeah. Okay, push it one time. I want to move the X axis. This is an XY Cartesian grid. Zero, zero is right here. That's the home position. Okay, so I'm sitting basically in the lower left quadrant of, an, of a Cartesian grid. Right. So if I want to move the X axis, we're always going to look at the guide in relative, in relation to the Cartesian grid. Yeah. So I'm going to move X positive right now to move. And in order to do that, what I'm doing now is I'm, as I'm highlighted on, on X, I push in and I rotate. And the more I rotate, the faster it goes. There's like seven different speeds. If I go one click, it goes one ten thousandth at a time. Two clicks is a little faster. Three clicks, four clicks, five clicks, etc. Until I'm at max speed. When I'm done moving, I just simply let go. If I want to go to the Y axis, I rotate it to the Y. Again, I push in if I want to go minus or plus. Push in, rotate this way, it should move the guides that way. Okay. A lot of guys, what they do is they put a plus and a minus over here so they don't get confused. And this will move a little faster once it gets lubed. Okay, there's plus, there's minus. So the drives are working, no problem at all. If anybody needs to uh, thread a wire and whatnot through here, you know, it's pretty elementary what it's doing. In order to take up the slack, we just push in on the wire speed at any time, and it'll run the wire for us. Depending on how much wire tension we have, the wire tension is a magnetic break through this wheel. Mm -hmm. The higher I turn this, the more of a drag it has here, and these these steel wheels are what actually is pulling everything through. This pinch wheel down here, yeah. that's what's pulling. So the difference between these two is how we get the tension in the wire. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I use the tension down a little bit low. You get it too high, it's really dragging on it. Okay, but nice in a cut, if you had a really you know tall cut, you want some pretty good tension. Keep things straight. Um, there's a granite block down here in the drawer. That's what they use to square up the wire. You guys don't need to do that, but if you guys have to do the install on this thing, there's the metal tab. Mm -hmm. And this would come over here and set in the corner, like so. You know, we want to make sure everything was nice and clean. Yeah. And we have a nice square edge now that we're gonna go do an edge find on. Mm -hmm. When it's edge finding against that block, we want to have both these LEDs on. Okay, and that tells you that things are square. If they're not, there's adjustment up here in this upper guide yeah, yeah, yeah. through that set screw and this side set screw. You have to loosen up the, 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 the plate just yeah. enough to where you can move the yeah. tensioner in or out. Okay? Yeah. And then you would come and do the same thing this direction on the y-axis. That's how you set up the squareness of the wire. You have to do an edge find. You have to do an edge the... find on, uh-huh. Correct. So what I do is I set the wire speed up really low. I set the tension up fairly high, five or higher. Yeah. You do an edge find into the block under the direction. That's how you set it up, and again, you just loosen these three bolts. There's a set screw there and a set screw there. They didn't make it easy on you. There's not one on the back side. Yeah. So you got to kind of get a metal or a wood stick or something to kind of pull it where you want it to be. There are springs in there, but mm -hmm. trust me, they're not enough to make that thing float. And of course, as the looser you get that, the more you're going to get this, and that's yeah. going to change your adjustment. It's very finesse. Yeah. Okay? Probably take, if it was off, you know, typically it's about a 15 or 20 minute job. And everything needs to be clean, and this isn't. This is dirty. It's you know not going to be square. These old keyboards mean nothing to this machine. These were early style phone jack ones. Yeah, the phone jack. Into the front yeah. monitor. Those are probably worth some money to somebody because you can't find those anymore. Really? <laughs> I mean, with old computers. Exactly. I don't know that the computers that those would go in are still running these days, though. Okay, so again, to move the screen, to navigate the screen, it's just simply point and click. Okay, if I wanted to do an edge find, I'm going to highlight edge find. Push the button, it moves me to the top. I want to do X or Y. Let's say I wanted to do X. I'm going to set my wire speed. I'm going to set my tension. Then I'm going to push in, and I'm going to tell it which direction to go minus or plus. So in this correct, this one, I want to go minus. 
and then let go. And then it takes off looking for an edge. And it's going to continue to mm -hmm. run this over. Machine, you don't have to do a home sequence? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. And I'll show you what, how to do that. We're moving over to that one next. So if I wanted to terminate an edge, uh, well, we'll let it go ahead and find an edge. And when you're doing an edge find, of course, we're supposed to have the guide real close to the top of the part, you know, to keep all that. But One of the things on this machine, these guides are, uh, the flush nozzles are, you know, they're threaded. If that flush nozzle is screwed up and I'm doing an edge find and it runs into the part, you're going to break something. You're going to shove that arm out. Something's going to happen. So I've got it screwed all the way down right now, so there's clearance between the flush nozzle and the bottom of the, the riser here. Oh, okay. But that is a definite on this machine. If it's screwed up for some reason, somebody had it up tied up into a part, they forgot, yeah. it vibrated up, it runs into something. It it's it's gonna the, move it's gonna move whole, this arm. I had the whole thing apart already because I couldn't get the wire it was the one that threaded the wire, they were all the nozzles were all clogged. And then then of course you saw when you had this apart, these four screws right here will reveal yeah. the carbide contactor and then the bottom of the diamond guide. That's yeah, a cone. Correct. Mm -hmm. And the same thing on the bottom. Those are supposed to be rotated periodically to get all the life out of the contactor. Uh -oh. I'm telling you stuff like you guys are going to own the machine, just, right. just, just so you know, okay? <laughs> this is the only way I know how to explain it. Oh, we're always here to learn. Okay, if you want to abort an edge find now, now that it says edge is found, I push in on the input knob, I scroll down to zero set, I could zero it out if I'd like to by pushing in. I'm going to rotate down here to the bottom, get over to jog, and jog myself off the part. So, pretty simple. The bitch about it is there's no remote control on this machine. You're standing here with your finger and your elbow right. and your arm and everything. You they, actually, they had a remote that came in later on. This machine didn't have it. The software, the software says remote on or off. That means nothing. It's just a later version software. They upgraded for a machine that had it, but it runs all the machines. So it says remote off, and that's because there's no remote. Um, hole center, if somebody wanted to do a hole center, it's the same as an edge find. Yeah. Put it over the hole, thread the wire. Hit the button, tell it which way to go, mm -hmm. yeah. okay, and it runs out, finds the center, and, and then tells you it's done. Home. I can home the X and the Y, or I can home just X or just Y. Um, when I tried to do both a minute ago, it uh, dropped my voltage. As you see, we got 28 volts sitting in the motor driver. Let's try and do a home. If it gets to 22, it'll throw an alarm. That's because of the loop. That's because of the loop. So we're at 23 and a half. It seems happy now. It's going to go ahead and do its thing. It's going to run out there to zero, zero, run on and off the limit switches, and that's what you would be a machine home. Why don't we leave it all the way when you're done? Leave it all the way out, too, so I can get there. underneath it. 